Alright, yo, what's up guys? How are we doing today? Welcome, welcome to this year's recap video. So yeah, here we are, yearly recap. 2022 has ended and we're walking along here on 2023. Um, I hope you're excited for this year. I personally am... I'm pretty decently excited. It's just kind of neutral somewhat. Um, I hope you have set up some goals and some things you want to do this year and achieve this year. Uh, me personally, we'll get into that in a little bit. So before we do though, we should check out 2022 and what goals I had in mind for that year. And those being these goals. It's not too many, like five, six maybe. Um, and I was able to achieve this many of them. Yeah, I was able to move out. I was able to upload more than six videos this year for a total of 12 if you count the 2021 recap and the update video. I was also able to start a skin routine, like actually use like skin products and stuff because my skin was starting to get really, really dry and torn. It's a long process and something that I'll keep up doing in 2023 as well. Um, I was able to finish the Breath of the Wild series as well, uh, which I am so happy about because the, it's this huge weight off my shoulders, because every time I start a series it's like, I kind of feel guilty to finish it, but like Breath of the Wild and Ori, they were series that I started, I finished, the recordings were done and everything, like the VODs were up on Twitch, but it was just the editing process that was taking so much time. But Breath of the Wild was finished, and I don't know what happened with this video, but for some reason YouTube really liked this one and like published it out to People's Recommended, which was really fun to see, because it's like the first time that has really happened to me, uh, with any video really, and I'll try my best to make that happen in 2023 as well. So for the goals that I were not able to finish, we have not been able to make the content I want to make. So, as I've somewhat explained, I think editing Twitch VODs is a very, like, big burden, because uh, it feels like it really limits your creativity. Um, and with the Ori and Breath of the Wild series, it really just sucks the life out of you, kind of. Which means I wasn't able to, like, really make the videos I wanted to make, because that, again, felt like shackles on my wrists. And speaking of the Breath of the Wild and Ori series, I was not able to finish the Ori series this year. I was close, but uh, not quite. We have about two episodes left in that series. One episode is like 90% done. It's about like 30 minutes of footage left to go through. Then there's the finale and then the Ori series is completely done. So it's close. I just, yeah, I wasn't able to finish it 2022. And then with the art on the channel, I was not able to update it completely. Uh, I did update the banner though. Uh, but I'm not too happy with the end result. I would like to draw more on it than just like my Minecraft character. The profile picture though, I, I've i probably worked on six, seven, probably even nine iterations of uh, almost fully complete drawings from sketches into line art and started coloring and shading. But I just wasn't happy with how the picture looked, so I just trashed all of them. Uh, but yeah, the profile picture stayed the exact same. But for 2022, I was able to finish four goals and I failed on three of them, which I'm, I'm decently happy about. Alright, so moving on from that, we have my 2023 goals and what I have in mind for this year. Starting off with making more videos than 2022! Let's go! <laughs> So, as I stated, I uploaded a total of 12 or 10, depending on how you see it, videos last year. But this year, I, I think I can do better, you know? That's like slightly more than one video every month. Uh, it seems doable, uh, so I'm gonna try my best and actually like commit, because, you know, I, I really like editing videos and once I'm done with the Ori series, I'm gonna get released from my shackles and be able to like destroy the world. <laughs> Another goal I have for myself is to be more responsible. So I was able to move out this year, which we'll cover in more detail in the next segment. But yeah, I just want to be more responsible and uh, do better. That's simply all I want. I want to be better and I want to do better. Another goal I have for this year is to make videos that I actually want to make. Now that doesn't mean that I don't want to make certain videos, but 
you know, I want to make uh, like scripted videos, I want to make uh, certain videos, I want to make more edited videos and stuff, not just Twitch highlight VOD editing, because that just fucking sucks. Another goal that I have, which is kind of, you know, it's something I want to do really, really badly, is get a cat. So I'm a huge animal lover, I love all types of animals, um, but a cat and a dog is something I've wanted ever since I was a kid, you know. But I was never able to get one as a kid, because uh, my dad always denied it, he said it was too big of a responsibility, and now that I've moved out, I can actually get my own cat. That's my decision to make. Um, <laughs> so I actually have like this grand plan of how I'll structure everything. Uh, like have a cat tree there by the window so you can look out and have like litter box there and like food bowl here. And I have structured a lot in my head of how I want to plan this out. Uh, so that's another thing I want to do this year. And the last thing probably being spend my time more responsibly. So this is a very, I feel, a very grown-up answer to say, because uh, last year there was this thing on Twitter that I saw. It was a certain website that was kind of like a YouTube recap type of deal. You could download like a file of your entire YouTube view history and uh, you could post it on the website and they would do kind of like the Spotify wrapped type of deal, uh, which was kind of cute. <laughs> But that made me realize something. It made me realize something pretty bad that I watched a total of almost 15,000 videos in 2022. That means like 40 plus videos every single fucking day. That is so much wasted time on nothing. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I just need to, I just need to be more responsible with my time because Time is one of the currencies that we will never be able to get back. Um, so if I'm just sitting here basically rotting away watching YouTube videos, it's not a way I want to live my life. So that is probably the biggest goal that I have for this year, to try and spend my time more responsibly. But yeah, those are basically my goals. I don't really have anything else in mind. It's just uh, be more responsible, be better as a human being and as a person, spend my time more responsibly, do things I want to do and just, you know, I guess I want to grow up a little bit. Uh, stop being this little kid <laughs> that I've held near and dear to my heart. I'm, I don't want to be a jaded adult, but I just want to have fun and do things I want to do. Um, so yeah. Okay, so just one more thing before we get into my 2022 and what I've done this year, is I just want to quickly go over some of my favorite things that I experienced this year. You know, like media-wise and games and that type of stuff. So starting off, I'm gonna mention A Way Out. I played it together with my good friend Oliver this year, who you've seen in a lot of videos. And it was some of the most fun video gaming <laughs> that I've ever had, you know? It was such a fun and unique experience, and especially experiencing it with Oliver, because <laughs> we're both just so fucking stupid <laughs> that, bro, we were laughing so hard non-stop throughout the entire game, and it was just such a good experience, so if you have a friend and you're both pretty blind on the game, I highly, highly recommend you play this game, because this was definitely my game of the year, 2022. Got a War 2018. So I also played it for the first time this year, and uh, about God of War, I was basically 100% blind as well. Uh, I hadn't looked up any gameplay or footage or streams or anything about the game when it released and everybody was playing it. So I got to experience it blind for the first time, and holy shit, what a good fucking game. Like, the story, the narrative, the combat, everything just was so fun. I think. All the characters were great, Artreus being, I think, the weakest part. Kratos, he was amazing. Mimir, he was amazing. You know, like, I just really, really enjoyed my time with the game. It was such a cool story to experience. So yeah, it, it was a really good game. If you haven't played it, I highly recommend you do. This year I also watched Breaking Bad for the first time, which is a series that released in, like, 2013, maybe? 
No, it concluded in 2013, but started in 2008. And it's one of those series that has this legendary godlike reputation that is like unbeatable television, right? And I did watch the first season, like maybe like 2013, 2014, but just wasn't too interested. But I gave it another shot now and holy fuck, I love the entire series. I have like very, very few nitpicks with it, but yeah, I definitely think it deserves the reputation that it has being this like legendary godlike series that can't be beat. All five seasons were really really enjoyable and really great, like the drama was just fucking amazing, some of the action scenes and like tense moments got me to get really fiddly and I just didn't want to watch because I got so like anxious, which is a good thing. But yeah, it, all the characters were great and oh, it was just, it was really good. So if you're like me and hasn't watched Breaking Bad yet, just fucking do it. Like, you won't regret it. It's such a good series. So yeah, those were the three things I really like wanted to speak about because they were my favorite things that I experienced this year. Alrighty, so my 2022. How did it go? How did I feel? Well, if I were to summarize this year in one word, I would say change. A lot has changed this year for me personally. I've gotten insane amount of responsibility, both personally and at work. But yeah, let's let's just get into it. So starting off this year in January, I started off pretty weak because um, I actually got COVID and was not feeling too good. But it's luckily the only time I got COVID and I got over it relatively quickly. And this year has been a journey for me because you know, I said on the 2021 recap video that I one of my goals was to move out. And that's basically what I spent most of this year trying to do. Throughout basically all of the year, I've been looking at apartments, 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 and more apartments. And I settled pretty quickly on that I actually wanted to buy an apartment. Like, I wanted to buy and own my apartment, and not just have, like, a rental one, or whatever you call it. What I did early in, like, February was that I got improvement of a loan uh, to be able to, like, look at apartments and, you know, be able to buy them if we were to get to that phase. Um, but I was looking at a lot of apartments, and I, I remember this one specific apartment that I was just, I was laughing my ass off when we were watching. So my dad convinced me to l go look at this, uh, like, one-room apartment. It was probably, like, 30, 32 square meters or so. Uh, but the area it was in was kind of like the shady area of my town. Uh, so I was not too excited, but he convinced me to go and look at it. So we did, and holy shit, the second I took one step inside the door, I was like, what the hell type of crack shack is this? Like, for example, they had painted the walls blue, right? And had like this white strip at the bottom of the walls. But the paint job was so poorly made, like all the electrical outlets had like a bunch of paint on them. The white strip had a bunch of paint on it. Uh, I remember I walked into the bathroom and I tried to turn on the light and the light fucking fell on me. <laughs> but I luckily like caught it uh, and like, awkwardly try to place it back when we went into the kitchen uh, the kitchen was like really scuffed i try and open the oven and the oven doesn't even open it's not that it's stuck well kind of because <laughs> it actually collided with the handles on the like drawers right next to it so it, it was just it was hilariously bad more than that i kind of like I, I looked at some rental apartments and I looked at... I tried to look almost everywhere in many different areas of my town and like see what was best. And I had this one specific area in mind. It's like the area that's somewhat closest to the store because we have like two grocery stores where I live. And uh, they're usually pretty far away from any apartment building, but there's this one area that's closer than anything else. And I kind of wanted to live there because it's like a very chill and pretty good area to live in. Um, and suddenly on the website, an apartment pops up in that area. 
it's a two room apartment, decent size. It was like 56 square meters or something. And for a very reasonable price as well. So me and my dad, we, we jump on the gun and we like go on the first viewing and I instantly fell in love. I was like, holy shit, this, this honestly is perfect. Because what I wanted to do when I was looking at apartments was that I I just kind of wanted to move out, not have to do too much, and I could just live there. And I felt like this was it. The apartment was pretty recently renovated, and they did an amazing job. Everything was almost just the way I wanted it to be. The layout was great, the walls and everything were great, the colors were just so cozy, everything just fit so nicely, and... I just fell in love. The bidding quickly starts and there's one guy who already placed a bid. I place another bid and then him and I we get into a slight bit of a battle here. We start bidding against each other like four, four times each probably until I place my fourth bid and there's silence. There's no more bids coming in so I'm just sitting there patiently waiting. And then a day goes by, two days go by, three days go by. Four. Five. Do you know what that means? That basically means that I have won this bidding and I got access to an apartment. So I was starting to get really, really excited. All I needed to hear was the words from the real estate agent. So it was like a Friday or so and she calls me. Hello? She goes, eh, hello? I go, yeah, hi. Um, so nobody else is placing a bid and you are our last bidder. So I'm trying to get in contact with the seller, but I have not been able to reach him. So can we hold out until next week? I was like, yeah, yeah, I can. Uh, for me, it's fine. So the weekend rolls by and we're on Monday. She doesn't call me on Monday, surprisingly, but on Tuesday, she actually hits me up and she goes, yeah, I was actually able to talk to the seller, and uh, he said, yeah, we can sell for this price. So are you ready to sign the papers? And I said, oh, no, 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 I can't do that just yet. I need to call my bank and stuff. Can we do that tomorrow or something? And she goes, um, so there's this thing that if you don't sign the papers, uh, we need to accept every single bid that comes in. So somebody can actually place a bid if we wait until tomorrow. And I go, okay, um, well, uh, let me end work early and I'll go home, talk to the bank and then we'll sign the papers. Does that sound good? And she goes, okay, see you later. So I rush and speak to my boss. I get approval to end work early. I rush home and when I'm literally like 10 meters from my door, the phone rings again. And it's the real estate agent. So I answer and I'm like, yo, what's up? She goes, and so you know how we were gonna sign the papers, right? Yeah. Um, so there's this woman and she got approval of her bank and she placed a bid 5,000 higher than yours. Oh. Okay. And my heart just gets crushed. Because when I placed my last bid, that was my absolute limit. I could not go any higher than that. And that was like all the money I could afford. So I didn't really know what to do. Uh, we speak a little bit more and uh, yeah, complications are complications. I did not win the apartment. The whole like process of that felt kind of shady and felt very off to me. But I lost an apartment that I had basically won for over a week at that point. And I was crushed. My heart was destroyed and I was just kind of sad for the next few days. But the hunt continued. The whole summer passed. I had like a summer break from work on two weeks and then autumn came around and... Then we found this other apartment. It was not the same apartment or the same apartment building, but it was in the general like same area. My dad shows it to me and it's for an even cheaper price than the last one I almost won. But the problem here is that this looks like another crack shed. <laughs> 
it looked so bad. Like, I'll show you some pictures. Um, like, it was not appealing at all to me. But my dad convinced me once again to go and look at it, at least give it a chance, you know? And the first thing I see is this black and white checkered floor. I'm like, bruh, who wants this? And apparently, like, an old fucking man lived there. He was, like, 80-something, and he was pretty sick and didn't feel too good. Uh, so he moved to, like, a assisted home living thing. The kitchen of the apartment was incredibly scuffed. There was so much empty space. Uh, like, I remember there was this, like, uh, the sink, right? And then there's a couple of drawers on the right. Then there was just empty space on the left. Oven. Small drawers. And like, a cabinet. <laughs> I sadly didn't take any pictures of that, but... Um, the living room, bathroom and bedroom looked pretty good though. Uh, they were in good condition and looked decent enough, and I was like, okay. It's for a very cheap price, like this is probably 100,000 Swedish crowns cheaper than anything else. But the whole viewing goes by, and then a couple of days goes by, and the real estate agent calls me and asks me if I'm interested. At this point, I was not. Uh, I was thinking about it pretty heavily, and my dad comes in like a fucking Chad, and he's like, Son, there's a lot of work to do with that apartment, but I think it might be the one. I don't know why I made my dad sound like a wise old man, but I go, I just want to move in and live there, but in the condition that apartment is in, I just, it's not gonna work. So he convinces me to actually like, that we can, we can do this, we can renovate the whole fucking thing. He will help, he will do a lot of things, he will be there and help me. And he just has this like fucking superpower to just convince you to agree. <laughs> so I do, I actually placed a bid. Slightly lower than the selling price, but I placed a bid nonetheless. The seller wouldn't have it, but we met in the middle of his selling price and my bid. And I won the fucking apartment. It was honestly pretty incredible. Because nobody else was interested, nobody else had placed a bid in like a week or two. And the real estate agent, he was like... Just so nice, he was talking to me a lot and... Helping me out through the process. So we come to like a slight complication. That we are currently on a Friday. And... Uh, He's like, yeah, you know, after tomorrow, I'm not available for two weeks. I was like, okay, wh what does that mean? Yeah, could we sign the papers today? He asks me. But again, I hadn't called my bank because this was like the official announcement that I won the apartment. So I go like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, we, we can do that. Let me call my bank. So I end work. I go home and I call my bank. I call my bank and there's this woman who answers and she goes And uh, yeah, hello? Uh, yeah, hi, my name is Adam and I had an approved loan at your bank And what's your date of birth? I tell her my date of birth and everything and we go through the whole process But then she goes uh, So you have an approved loan of this amount? Yeah But you see, the thing is, our approvals are only valid for three months Wait, 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 three months? Yep. So now you gotta remember that I actually got my approval in early February, and we are currently in like mid August. So as I feel my adrenaline rushing, my heart pumping, and my panic rising above the fucking moon, I call my dad and he kinda low key calms me down, but I'm still extremely stressed. He tries to be reasonable and like, explain what I should do. The first thing I do is that I call my real estate agent back and I go, Yo man, uh, we have a big big problem here. Oh yeah? Yeah, what's up? So the loan that was approved and everything was ready, right? The bank apparently has this thing where an approved loan is only valid for three months. And after that it's... it doesn't exist anymore, right? So I currently don't have a loan lined up that I can take. Uh, so what, what, what do we do? And he calmly just states, yeah, yeah, that's fine, you know? We have this special contract where you can sign it without a loan confirmed, 
but if you don't have a loan within 7 days, then the contract just fiddles away into dust, right? So, it's fine. Wait, wait, really? That's a thing you guys have? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, then we can sign that. Can you... can you fix that today? And he happily does, you know? On a Friday, late at night, it's like 8-ish o'clock, he comes over to our house and <laughs> and we start signing the papers. But sadly, he had written my last name wrong on all the papers, so he had to change it by hand and I had to like do a little signature by the name change so it actually became correct. Um, but yeah, we sit there for about like 2-ish hours and just sign papers, we go through everything. So once we're done with all the signing and stuff, he takes all the papers and he leaves. He wishes me good luck, I wish him happy vacation, but he will still be available to like, contact during his vacation, which is just such a fucking chad, nice move of him to do. So the first thing I do when he leaves and I close the door and we're done, I instantly apply for a new loan at my home bank where I'm actually like a customer. You know, because they don't need any, like, extra paperwork or anything, because they already know that I have a monthly income and, like, where the money is coming from. So I quickly apply and then suddenly everything just turns into a waiting game. So we pass Saturday, Sunday, and we're back on Monday. The first thing I do in the morning is that I call the bank instantly. I wait in queue for about, like, 40... 48 minutes or so. I speak to the bank person and tell her my whole story and my situation everything that's been going on, and that I need an answer as quickly as humanly possible. Because this is the week we have until Friday, and then, then I'm screwed. Then it's over. Game over, right? She's actually very understanding of my situation, and she thinks I'm very unfortunate about what happened, but she will do her best to actually help me. So we close off the call, and again, it just turns into a waiting game. The entire Monday rolls by, Tuesday rolls by, Wednesday rolls by, and now I'm starting to get a little bit nervous here. You know, we arrive on Thursday and I'm extremely anxious, you know. I just wait and I wait, I wait for my phone to ring and, you know, I do get a lot of calls at work, by work, because I have a lot of responsibility and a lot of areas to cover. Um, so every time my phone just buzzes, I intensely grab it and just look at it, but if it's not the bank, I just got kinda disappointed. Um, but a couple of hours go by, you know, we are past the morning and it's almost lunchtime when my phone rings. I look at my phone and it's not a contact that I have saved on my phone. So my excitement levels go from like negative 100 instantly to like 200,000. And I answer the phone, and I'm like, yeah, 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 hello, my name is Adam. And there's a relatively young woman speaking in the phone, and she goes, Hi Adam, how are you? Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, how about you? I'm fine, thanks. So you recently applied for a loan, and I heard about your situation, and you're in quite of a hurry, aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, it's been chaotic as hell. Yeah, we've looked up a bunch of information about you, and uh, everything seems good. Nothing out of the ordinary, and uh, we approve of this purchase. Just hearing her say those words were the biggest, just relieving feeling I have ever felt. Like, it was almost orgasmic. Like, imagine you have, like, a, this huge shit in your ass, right? And you just, like, it's gone, and you feel like you can jump to the moon. And I just simply respond with, Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you, thank you so much. We close off the call. I text message my real estate agent. I tell him that I have another completely confirmed loan ready. They approve the purchase. Everything is set and done. He writes back to me like an hour later or so and tells me like, you sure everything is good? Yeah, everything's done. They approved of everything and we're good to go. Well, that's great. I'll see you in two weeks, he says. And that was that. The incredible amount of stress that I felt was not something I would recommend you ever feel in your life. Um, but the relief afterwards was beyond amazing, right? Some time passes, like two weeks or so, and my real estate agent is back from his vacation. He calls me and hits me up, and then we meet up. I sit there nervous as fuck, I'm, I'm like shaking, and I'm really like uh, fiddly. 
I'm there with my dad because I don't know what I'm supposed to do. But because we had like signed everything and signed all the papers, he like gave me one more paper to sign. He goes away for like 20 minutes. I just sit there waiting and waiting and waiting until he comes back inside. He reaches his hand out for me and he was like, cup your hand. So I reach out my hand under his and he just drops the keys into my hand. I look at them, I look at him and I was like, so that's it? Yeah, that's it. Congratulations, he says. And he reaches out a hand for a handshake. I shake his hand and I just say, thank you, man. So now with the keys in my hand, I needed to head back to work. Uh, my dad goes back to his work. And uh, on the evening, my dad helps me get approval from the association that actually owns the apartment building. He helps me apply for renovation there to get like a green light, which happens the next day we get approval. And my dad, while at work, is able to rip out the whole fucking kitchen. Because <laughs> he's able to do that while he's working, because he works like somewhat like a caretaker of rental apartments. So when he doesn't have work to do, he was able to work on my apartment instead. But yeah, the day after, we start like planning out a bunch of stuff, like how we want certain areas to look and like what my mental image is and what I have in mind. For example, I said that I wanted somewhat dark flooring and I wanted the kitchen to look a little bit differently and to utilize the space better and stuff. Uh, my dad also had some ideas and we helped each other come up with what we think was the optimal solution. And then we simply just got started. It wasn't only just me and my dad, but my sister and her boyfriend was able to help as well, uh, which was a tremendous help, obviously. But yeah, what we did was that we tore down a whole wall in the kitchen to free up a lot of space. We tore down another wall in the bedroom to make a new whole closet area. We tore up all the floor, we painted all the walls, we put up wallpapers. Uh, we had to like redo this part of the ceiling because when we tore down the kitchen wall, the ceiling somewhat like fell down or started cracking like outwards into like the eating area you know so that had to be fixed and yeah we did a lot of stuff and my dad he was obviously a tremendous help and i am so glad that i had him to help me with this whole process and like he he really pushed me in a good way to actually do this because as I stated earlier, I wasn't too excited to like renovate and redo a bunch of stuff. I just wanted to get an apartment, buy it, move in, live there. But renovating took about a month. I think I got the keys August 25th. We started renovating uh, right before September. And then I was able to move in, I think, at the beginning of October. So all of September was spent just almost renovating every single day. Like we went to Ikea to get help with planning out a kitchen that was really fucking expensive and honestly, as annoying as it was to do all these things and having to be forced to come here and tear down and build up and replace and yada yada, like it, it was a lot of hard labor and work. But I am so glad that my dad was able to convince me to buy this place. And I'm just, I'm really happy. Um, my dad and I, when we did this, I felt that we had one of our first like real father-son bonding moments. Because uh, like when I was younger, I felt somewhat neglected. And him and I, we grew quite far apart uh, for a very long time. But being able to do this together with him as my like number one help, it was really nice, honestly. It was like we could reconnect a lot. And he was really like nice with it. It was like he was a different person all of a sudden. Like I I thought he would get angry and annoyed all the time like he used to be, but he's really changed as a person. And I'm glad that I finally got to realize that. Um, but yeah, the ending result of my apartment, I am really happy with. Uh, it's not 100% complete yet though, even though I've lived here for a couple of months. But honestly, isn't that like every place ever? Like if you buy a house, it's probably never gonna be complete. There's always something, something to do, right? 
If you are ever considering buying an apartment or a house or whatever, then let me tell you, it's gonna be extremely stressful. Uh, like applying with the banks, having to answer a bunch of fucking questions, like all the time you get called hundreds of times every day, it feels like. Uh, and then a lot of problems are probably gonna occur. Problems that you have to get around or solve. A lot of issues will show themselves and you need to adapt a lot when doing this. Uh, and be ready that it's gonna be expensive, right? But yeah, I moved in towards the end of September, probably early October. Um, and bro, I was not prepared at all. <laughs> Moving in here really showed me how spoiled I was at home. Because I didn't think, like, I'm not that spoiled, you know? I don't get a lot of money from my dad. I don't get a lot of things. Like, barely anything, I felt like. I never really requested anything, and he never really, like, gave me too many things. So I didn't think I was spoiled in that way, but... Moving in here, holy shit. The responsibility you need to take. Like, this was a wake-up call for me. When I lived at my dad's place, like, I started the dishwasher a couple of times, I took out the dishes, I hanged up the laundry probably once or max twice. Uh, like, I cut the lawn for, like, one full summer almost, because my dad had an operation in his hip, so he couldn't do that. Um, but yeah, I... I bro. <laughs> Now I need to cook food, like, every, what, two days? I need to clean my clothes on my own, I need to clean this entire place on my own. Like, there's so much shit that goes into living alone that I was not expecting, but it's going well. I'm learning, I'm adapting, and I'm improving, right? I'm getting better on being my own man, and, uh, yeah, I'm just generally pretty excited. So yeah, I think that was basically everything I wanted to talk about. The New Year's went by, I didn't really do anything special. Same with Christmas, like... But yeah, it's been... It's been an eventful year. Even though it feels like nothing has happened, a lot of things have changed. And actually happened. Um, yeah, I don't really have too much to say anymore. I think that is everything. If you enjoyed the video, then I highly recommend you subscribe. Or in the Will of Wisps is coming up very soon, and I do have a Masha Moments that I've started that's probably coming up relatively soon as well, so you have that to look out for. But uh, I think that is everything for this video. Um, yeah, I think I'm happy. I hope you're happy. I'll see you guys next time. So take care, and bye bye. <laughs>